Hello everyone. In today's last session, we are with Sinan Güler. He is professional basketball player, investor and social entrepreneur at the same time. Uh, welcome. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Uh, we're we're so happy to have you and we are so happy to uh, running this event, uh, especially uh, at the very ending of hopefully very ending of the uh, lockdown. And mm -hmm. uh, we're so happy that we are doing this in a global basis and reaching out a lot of people. And uh, especially I am so uh, excited about talking you about um, talking with you about the uh, building resilience uh, concept. So um, if you want, we can start or I just introduce you shortly if you want to um, yourself, we would be more happy uh, to hear. Um, it would be my pleasure. First of all, I would like to congratulate all of you as a team at Next Generation and Üretken Academy to arrange and organize such an event at a global sc scale. Um, and I believe that the enjoyment and the feelings that you have and the tiredness uh, within all of you uh, will be will bring a lot of benefits in the future. So congratulate you. I would like to congratulate you for organizing this. And I would like to also thank you for having me as a guest. I saw the guest uh, before me. Um, it, it It's a tough ending for me because everybody's bringing the bar so high. Um, to talk a little bit about myself, you know, as a as a person who was born within the basketball community, within the basketball court, I've been in basketball for almost, basically my whole life. But with the chances I got from the professional basketball career, I had a chance to share my basketball experience with other people, share my family's basketball experience with other people. And we formed an organization named Güler Legacy um, to do to organize events on and off the court um, for all the ages, whoever playing basketball or uh, people from the corporate life. Um, building this social entrepreneurship and building this social enterprise actually um, helped me start understanding about more, more about the startup ecosystem globally and uh, within our own country, Turkey. And I had a chance to invest in a company to learn more about what angel investing is. So at this point, um, seven years into my investing career, I've invested to, uh, to around 30 companies. And now I'm running my own accelerator program that's focusing on sports uh, vertical. And I'm moving towards creating a community that uh, brings innovation to the verticals of sports, media, entertainment, and culture. And I'm thinking and I'm focusing a lot on impact in order to build this community. And again, you know, I took, uh, I will watch even with more um, focus later on today or later on this week, but the guests today will help me and bring me a lot of um, inspiration to continue what I'm trying to do. And uh, it's a privilege to be among uh, this list of people. Well, um, thank you for all your uh, good um, impressions and reviews about the previous uh, speakers. And we will be uh, keep doing those sessions until Friday. And at the same time, uh, with most of our uh, speakers, we will talk about uh, today in their um, industry specific and uh, try to understand and try to understand them uh, with their knowledge about tomorrow and with their um, expectations about tomorrow. And we will try to find out in which part we can be uh, involved but in uh, there are some specific uh, and special sessions that we are talking about some core entrepreneurship skills um, and this session with you is one of them uh, as I mentioned it's about building resilience 
uh, the idea of uh, us uh, having you with that concept came from the uh, tweet that uh, our team saw before about um, you, the tweet that you uh, mentioned, Daily Stoic. It was about uh, Stoicism. And uh, we we got really inspired because personally, I am um, reading that uh, book too. And we are, when we think about the, uh, the, um, structure of being as uh, being a sport being into sports and being an entrepreneurship actually requires a lot of um, mentalities and we are really excited to uh, talk and hear about your mentality in this session so as a starting question but please <laughs> No, um, I, I, I wanted to say, you know, when, we, when, we, when we're going to start talking about resilience, I think the main thing that um, people can get from what we're going to talk today is it's not only for entrepreneurship, it's not focusing on in any type of industry, let's say. Um, yeah. Whatever we go through, it's basically a lifetime progress and lifetime learning experience and um, I'm hoping that, you know, we can share our feedbacks, our experience with that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, it's not like uh, we are trying to lead a destination. It's, as you mentioned, as the topic, uh, it's coming from the topics in nature that it's kind of a destination that you can, uh, that everyone can apply in their lives. Uh, in a daily basis, but does enormous changes. Uh, so as a starting question, um, what does resilient uh, mean to you? Like in a, in a word a definition? Um, it's really hard to put it in like one single wor word to understand it, um, but it's basically being ready for anything that comes to you. That that will be the shortest explanation that I can come up with. Yeah, actually, but being ready for, um, yeah, you, you said something very large, actually. So it's not that uh, short, I believe. Because mm. as we know, life is full of uh, unexpected situations, but we all have some kind of, um ways to cope with it but maybe uh we can transform it something like being uh being it's like about being how uh strong to wake up uh, and get up psychologically and physically and maybe move on from the things that you see in your life the unexpected things um well, if we look at expected and unexpected things, and if we look at the obstacles in our work, in our lives, um, those are the things that help us build the resilient and build the shell around us to become stronger and become better and become more successful. Um, if and I'm trying to remember the word. I think when you asked me this yesterday in Turkish, there there was there there was a word that came up immediately, but I cannot think of the word right now in English. Um, so the, the main thing that resilience brings to a person is e exactly what you're saying. Um, it's being ready for whatever comes at you and having the energy to, um, having the energy to, let's say, move against it, uh, do something yeah. about it and become, become better, become more aggressive about it. Um, when we look at athletic um, side of things, you know, being resilient is exactly knowing what you're going to do against all possible outcomes, expected and unexpected. With expected th things, you can train yourself to get ready for every single thing. And that training actually will help you cope with and react to all the unexpected stuff on un unexpected stuff also yeah actually uh so um i remember that you mentioning the um reaction about uh towards the situations that uh, comes up in your life so 
when we live in that moment, uh, trying to, yeah, we are hearing a lot of um, maybe advice from a lot of people about how to behave and how to react to the situations, but um, applying this into the into a person's life is uh, not that easy. When we talk, it's it's obviously uh, more. It sounds more applicable, but uh, for uh, being successful, actually, uh, what what is your uh, approach? What are the things that you say yourself every day, and uh, how do you keep? Uh, um, in which motivation do you keep uh, asking and telling yourself again and again? I hope I think I, the... I... yeah please yeah, yeah. I, I that was that was very clear there the a little bit of breaking up in the in the middle of the question but the main thing that I understood and I think it's a late um late discovery for myself is there are certain things that I control in my life and there are certain things that I cannot control in my life and probably throughout the 24 hours in the day that we have I would say about 10% of things are in our control, but that also affects about 90% of what we do during the day. Um, and from what I read from all the great Stoics and from the, let's say, from people who's talking about being a better person for our own self, Plus, for the people around us, yeah. they're talking about, you know, what you control is basically your reactions to what comes at you. Um, because your body is basically not in your control. Your um, whatever happens outside of your body is not in your control. But what, what it, when it comes to what you're thinking inside and how you react to things is quite in your control. And uh, you, you mentioned about advice from outside. There's also a lot of noise coming within and it's talking mostly negative to what you're doing. And it's basically making you that lazy, unproductive, um, successful, but not up to it, not up to his or her potential person. And I believe that, you know, every day when you wake up, when you're doing something, it's basically like these are the things that brought me here. You got to remember those. You got to remember your yesterday. You got to remember your, you got to understand what's going to happen tomorrow and you got to act um, according to those feelings, bring your best to what you're doing today. Um, I would like to mention John Wooden, a late basketball, great basketball coach, um, coached UCLA in the 70s and basically was the most successful coach ever to be coaching in an NCAA team. And his defini definition of success is, in a broad sense, not the exact sentence, is doing everything in a day with full potential, full capability, and knowing that you've done everything at the end of the day. Basically, when you put your head to the pillow, no knowing that you've done everything that you can at the best way possible that's that's when you're successful. It doesn't matter with material success. It doesn't matter with the cups, um, money that you won, earn, and this and that. But it matters that if you do what you're supposed to do in within the 24 hours that's given to you and go to bed with that feeling, with that serenity, that means that you're successful and everything else will follow that. Yeah, actually, actually, you're so right about all the things that you said, and it was uh, a really good wrap up and uh, inspiring uh, for me. Uh, at the same time, maybe uh, we can talk about the um, talk about the, uh, the as you said just before, doing everything that you can in those twenty four hours that's given to you. Uh, how do you be sure about you are doing the right thing for yourself? Because it's like, if you don't have a direction, any wind can uh, move you forward, actually. There was some sort of a word. So when we think of it in that way, 
it's basically so relevant with the entrepreneurship and it's also so relevant when it comes to sports because uh, you are some sort of focused but at the same time you know when to pivot by uh, maybe in other ways so how do you uh, see that situation what is your criteria about when to change or when to stay it's yeah <laughs> it, it, it is it is quite a deep question first of all thank you for yeah. that and um and it's a constant struggle and it's a daily process as we talked about building resilience if we let's say if we bring biology to this um, if you have the right habits to get you that feeling that you've done everything that you're supposed to do you, your neurons start having neuroplasticity that helps you get those habits in the right right path um as an athlete i'm bound to the four corners of basketball court and i know what i'm supposed to do what my role is what my capabilities are and what i should be doing for my team to succeed um so many things are easy because there is a given pamphlet on what i should be doing in life it's not so easy because um because again it goes back to what i was just saying it goes to what happened yesterday what will happen tomorrow and what i'm doing today and it's maybe kind of like looking at this as a you know karma approach but not really because i'm in control of what i'm doing and i'm in control of what i want to do i know that how how they they um meet each other and they feed each other so one thing that maybe it's a learning progress for me is finding the right thing that feeds my needs but at the same time doesn't take away from other people in a sense and it's a again it's a constant learning process and it's a um it's something that should be reminded through affirmations every day yeah actually the things that you said uh reminded me that our previous conversation about knowing yourself like what is uh, good for you and what take something away from you knowing yourself is another deep concept actually and uh when you actually know yourself you can decide what's best for you as you mentioned uh so do you have um do you have uh would you like to add something about the concept knowing yourself um the best thing I can say is be open to knowing yourself because sometimes people can block a lot of things. And I'm doing this on a daily basis to myself also, like uh, at certain points of my of my day in basketball court with my family, with the stuff that I'm trying to do. Um, be open to who you are. Be open to what your talents are and be open to what you provide uh, because then we you realize what your value is not only for yourself but for the people around you and taking those steps and being open to learning about more more about yourself will lift a lot of load from your back um that's that's the that's that's going to make a run a not an uphill run but a like a straight run in a sense that that's something that i can say so um what do you think about the uh, the making uh, some sort of analysis about yourself after the play during the play and when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, as you mentioned uh, what happened and what is our status so how how does these things work in from your perspective and your area? Well, in, in basketball, to get better, you got to know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And when things go well, when you're winning, when um, everybody's happy, certain things that you're not good at usually gets blocked away or they hide in a shadow somewhere. And they come out really, really, really strong when, when you start losing or, or when you lose a game. Um, in, if we talk about entrepreneurship, um, 
knowing again knowing yourself knowing the value that you want to create but being ready to unexpected things that are outside your of your control and be peaceful with what you're doing to change for the better of what you're doing for your business for the value that you're creating is very helpful we can i can give examples and you can probably find anywhere in or uh, in the internet over on the internet about kobe bryant and how he was basically studying his own game and that's probably you know improving with the technology improving with what people can do but when you start seeing what you've been doing in the game it's a lot easier to comment on what you're doing right and you're going to be self critical more than anybody else your coach cannot be as critical as you can to yourself because you know what you're doing wrong and you know how that feels so finding a way to first of all having the right mentors helps you a lot you cannot do this alone but at the same time having having the um courage to look at what you're doing and realizing that there might be something wrong and being open to that is completely uh the most important thing think that you can do and to be honest i must i must add um when you're building a team it's very important that you find people who complements your talents not um contradicts with your talents and be ready to be in conflict with your teammates because that's the daily struggle and that will help you become better person be be become better leader and for sure become better startup well um that that was great actually i was just trying to uh, process the things that you said and uh i have uh, another question uh so the things that you mentioned basically uh, takes the person in the center and being uh, aware as much as possible but at the same time you mentioned uh, having good mentors are really important at the, mm. so uh, my question is uh, there are some times that uh, you only you knows what's best for you but at the same time most of the people would disagree would you have uh, did you ever uh, experience that kind of a moment uh, when uh, in the entrepreneurship field or when uh, you are in uh, a game like you think that you need to do something but most of the people or a lot of people is disagreeing uh, how do you suggest the listeners to act upon in that situations and how do you react um it knowing that you know you knowing about that decision even though there are a lot of people disagreeing with it the gut feeling will tell you to go go for it and for sure for sure for sure go for it the first thing the worst thing that can happen is making a mistake and you learn from that mistake and most of the people who are disagreeing with you will say i told you so but at the same time if you're successful then you're going to see a lot of a lot of a lot of praise coming back at you because you made a decision that was not normal to most of your peers or your mentors or what not well yeah that was that was a good answer feeling actually <laughs> yes I'm getting inspired. So uh, just like the that. other audiences. Uh, so do you have, uh, have you experienced uh, an enlightenment moment recently during the pandemic? Do you have uh, something that you, re of course we all have uh, realizations, but something that is um, included in your perspective of, or of your life or maybe of the working mentality of yours um i'm probably in the process of evolving around that um the biggest thing that i learned is i cannot i cannot know everything i can only learn so much and i can only do so much um i'm trying to understand how valuable our time is on 
Earth, basically. We have very short and limited time compared to what you, how old the universe is. Um, and at the same time, how precious time with family is. Um, I have a, a year and a half year old daughter um, and learning life through her eyes is nothing like anything I've learned in sports or anything, any anybody I met through the network of the ecosystem. Aside from that, um, what I've been learning from my experience in past year and a half with on the entrepreneurship side um, is that, you know, financial gains and financial wealth is very, very, very important and very necessary. But in my experience, I realized that building the right network and keeping in touch with the right network um, will bring a will bring everything that a person needs in their life. Um, hence be it financial success, other material successes, um, the idea that will bring them an exit exit strategy to a, for, for their startup and whatnot. So I believe those two things are very important in my life and I'm trying to cherish that. And also that also teach me how to be grateful on the precious life that we have. Uh, exactly. You're so right. Especially during those pandemic times, we, we knew that digital transformation was coming, but we wasn't expecting it to be that fast. Uh, even our mm. grandparents started to use uh, smartphones and downloading WhatsApp or etc. But in those times, we, uh, I believe that people coming, uh, becoming maybe more physically alone uh, they had more time to think about themselves and with the concept of knowing themselves at the same time it started to get boring at the same maybe maybe you would agree i don't know but uh, well the 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 life that we go through you know um with the pandemic it, it probably feels a lot like the movie from bill murray's uh groundhog day um, if anybody hasn't watched it yet, please go watch it as soon as possible after Techstar Week is over, maybe, but make sure that you watch it. Um, but at the same time, you, re you realize when you go through the movie, um, we go through the same routine, we go through the same single every single day, and certain things feel way too similar. But there are small things that changes that you make the day better. Um, and it's all in our control to do that. It's not only um, it's not only what happens outside. And when we look at a situation like global pandemic, it's unexpected and un it, it's something that we couldn't respond at a global scale. Not only it affected us at a, at a global scale. So we to be ready to be resilient for anything, we got to let go of a certain thing, certain amount of things that is beyond our reach. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we are. Um, I I see this conversation as there is a whole plate. Uh, it's not like it doesn't have a destination, but we are, oh, not a plate, or maybe there is an object, and we are approaching it from that side and that side and that side because everything uh, you said is actually really connected with each other. But mm -hmm. basically, if um, maybe I can give you. Uh, I can give a li little bit of a uh, summary uh, about we started to talk about being resilient and at the same time being ready for the expected and unexpected situations uh, with knowing yesterday, today and tomorrow. Actually, it really it uh, fit in our uh, concept in uh, Techstar Startup Week Next Generation 2. And uh, then uh, we talked about uh, tough situations and how to react upon them, and maybe uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit about uh, being uh, self-awareness. 
And do you have uh, an additional uh, word? No, I think, again, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience and share my, let's say, uh, experience is the best word to share. But again, thank you for giving me th this opportunity and hope you hope you the best for the rest of the week. Thank you so much. Before we uh, close that session, there is a question uh, if you would like to answer. Uh, Ejam is asking if uh, you can give some advice, advices about uh, being entrepreneurship for the new beginners. Um, first of all, I think in Turkish culture, um, we learn entrepreneur, we learn how to become entrepreneurs quite late and it's becoming, it's coming to a younger and younger age, even quicker now. But one thing, two things that I would suggest. One, try and fail. Try, try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. Michael Jordan said it the best, you know. Um, he missed so many shots to make, you know, the five very important shots in his career. The wording is probably different than I just shared, but... You know, if you don't try, you don't know how you're going to reach the success. Um, I think that's the best thing that I can say. And second, be curious. Um, be curious about yourself, learning about more about yourself. Um, again, you cannot know it all. But at the same time, being open to change, being open to learning more things will help you a lot. And it will bring... Um, it will bring a lot of opportunities to your life. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, really, it was a real inspiring uh, uh, session, especially uh, for the ones who haven't heard about uh, or haven't thought about the word resilience. We uh, lighted a lot of uh, doors for them. So maybe you can just uh, pause the video and uh, go in detail with the things that uh, um, Sinan said. So uh, if I would like to conclude the whole day, uh, I would like to start with Esra Nur Kaygan. Uh, she was our uh, starting uh, speaker. She talked about sustainable development goals as actors and especially the ones who are investors and entrepreneurs, that they should um, they should focus on those problems because uh, each one of them will be uh, our in our uh, topic discussion just as much as we do as in COVID. So th those are important parts, and there are people, and the people I mean governments investors, people are uh, started to be become aware of those problems and started to save money and give money for them. So she uh, highlighted those uh, sectors that needed to be developed. Uh, she gave some examples. Uh, you can uh, check the video in a few uh, uh, weeks and uh, give a little bit of more detail about those sectors and those uh, examples maybe. And then we had Ilker Baydar. Uh, he talked about the uh, future of careers. Uh, he mostly focused on the uh, reason why previously uh, the people were uh, more likely to become doctors or lawyers, but now more likely we are more likely to hear entrepreneurship wor uh, word in every aspect of our lives and he mentioned that it is re highly uh, relevant with the new generation actually because uh, for example me i can include myself in it and uh, we are born in a world where we can uh, we can personalize things we can personalize our uh, mm, playlists we can personalize our uh, working uh, tools and everything. And uh, basically, he told that the future of uh, the all career, uh, all the jobs and etc. will include entrepreneurship skills 
uh, in a core basis. Uh, and then Tura Shahiner, uh, sorry. And then uh, Yaman Halavi was our um, our uh, speaker. And then he he mostly mentioned that uh, there are uh, other um, there are a lot of parts of uh, refugees. And when we talk about the youth uh, and young refugees, we can even con include the people who are in their 30s because of the educational disadvantages that uh, inequality inequalities actually. And then uh, as a solution, he told that uh, the refugee youth should talk more, should be more involved. And um, actually people need to be in touch in order to understand them and beat those inequalities. And then Turash Aynar was with us. Uh, he, he talked about that how science fiction or how uh, virtual realities become, uh, become our realities. And when we uh, experience life in a virtual, life, in virtual way, uh, humanity starts to create its own reality, in other words. And it's, uh, he really uh, did a really good connection with uh, science fiction movies. Uh, a Minority Report movie was, uh, was an example of this. Uh, we also recommend you to watch it. It's one of my favorite movies also. And uh, we had Sinan Güler in our session with us still right now. And we talked about resilience. Uh, maybe you would like to conclude that session. Um. Actually, I don't know what else to say, but again, thank you for um, being open to being open to change and being open to improving yourself for all all of our listeners, all of our um, audience tonight. And I'm hoping that um, this will be. I know that this will be a successful week for everyone who joined, and I appreciate that uh, you made me part of a great. Uh, great organization and Hassan hello to you too uh, it's been a while since I've seen you um, and again thank you very much thank you so much for attending and we will be uh, moving on with the other days about uh, within the event uh, so goodbye and have a good night and have a good day for now, right?